Greetings, and today we're going to take a look at what's been happening in Northwest Africa in 2024, or so far this year. I hope you enjoy. Here's a list of what we're going to cover today. Morocco, Senegal, Mauritania, Sierra Leone, Guinea-Bissau, and uh, just kind of wind up with some conclusions and general comments about the area. If none of those topics are of any interest to you, well, you're probably in the wrong video. Starting with news on the GTA project. That stands for the Greater Tortue Omnium uh, FPSO. You can see why I call it GTO. Anyway, the uh, FPSO has arrived from China. It's uh, currently about uh, 40 kilometers offshore in about 120 meter water depth. The wells uh, on the fields will be uh, at around about up to 2,850 meters. So it's going to be the deepest subsea development in Africa. The uh, vessel is capable of producing uh, 2.3 million tons of LNG annually for 20 years. Now there's going to be 140 personnel on board. To give you some idea of the scale, apparently it's 1.52 million meters of cables on board. It can produce 500 million standard cubic feet of gas a day. It's the phase one of the LNG project. There is going to be a floating LNG hub terminal about uh, 10 kilometers offshore. So this vessel here is just uh, producing, drying, cleaning up the gas and then pumps it to the uh, floating liquefied natural gas liquefaction plant, which will be moored 10 kilometers offshore. Announced back in January of this year, Petrovac has secured a three-year operation services contract for BP's GTA project. Now it's a multi-million dollar master services agreement for both onshore and offshore personnel, equipment, maintenance, etc. They already had the, uh, the deck crew services, but uh, this is a significant addition. Now this is what GTA looks like in Trove. Lots of information. If you want to know what's going on in this field, Trove's the place to look. Moving on to Senegal, Woodside has actually received the FPSO for the Sangamar field development. Uh, this was announced back in February. We've done a video on Sangamar and uh, you can see it referenced here. In fact, Woodside themselves uh, did a, a video about a year ago. We'll, we'll keep updating as the story unfolds. Now, the FPSO has arrived 100 kilometers offshore Dakar in February 24. It came from Singapore. And it's going to hook up and commission the top sides and hook up the 23 wells. Phase one capacity is 100,000 barrels of oil per day with 145,000 barrels of water injection capacity. 1.3 million barrels of storage on board the vessel. And that's a Woodside 82% and Petrosen. 18%. Here's a map showing where Senegal is. It doesn't have the field location on it. It was announced in June that Woodside had achieved first oil at Sangamara. So congratulations to Woodside and partners and uh, really to everybody. Senegal has become the latest country to become a significant oil producing nation. Great news there. Here is part of the trove entry for Sangamara. Couldn't actually fit it all in, the uh, unable to zoom out enough to get a, a thumbnail, but uh, you can see huge amounts of data. So looking at Mauritania, here's yet another great post from uh, Jimmy Bolter, and uh, it shows the map on the left. The license position in Mauritania back in 2019, and on the right, the uh, position in Q1 2024. Shell have relinquished the Deepwater Block C10 and C2, shown here on the map on the right. This follows the uh, Panacotta 1 dry hole, which was plugged and abandoned back in November 2023. We've mentioned that in a previous Trove News video. Is it all sort of MSGBC blues? Well, of course, uh, GTA is a bright spot with the pending production, but you know, BP pulled out of the Yakar Taranga deepwater gas project, so that's now down to Cosmos and Petrosen. That is interesting because back in 2017, Yakar Taranga was considered by some analysts as the biggest discovery in the world. It's kind of why we don't get too excited on the results of, uh, of just a single exploration well. But hey, there you go. Subsurface risk probably contributed to this. The uh, reservoir is uh, thought to be complex and indeed compartmentalized. Other discoveries uh, on the concession include Orca and Marsoon. Now, lots of small companies are chasing farmings and or other funding in the area. Here's the Burr Aller license, which expired in late April 2024. It was uh, BP, Cosmos, and uh, the state company uh, Petrosen. Cosmos are saying that they're quite keen to relicense. 
Here's more detail on the Panna Cotta dry hole and a sort of description of the uh, Central Salt Basin. This from Kieran Nolan, who uh, I think probably owes me a beer by now for all the plugs we've been giving him on the channel. And here's a cross section. Nice work, Kieran. This is what you get in trove for, for the same dry hole. Lots of information there, and that's what you get for Better Allah. So you can find lots of information on all these areas. So here's a list of the assets that we hold in uh, Trove, Northwest Africa. You can see there's fields, discoveries, dry holes, prospects, all sorts of information. Now, there is a proven petroleum system at work in various parts of the shelf. We challenge the regulator. Maybe we can help promote the country. Not only do we have these 34 assets, but we have all the adjoining countries. In fact, all the way from Morocco in the north, all the way down here to Liberia in the south. Every field, every discovery, lots of prospects, any and every sort of information, stratigraphy, structural geology, all available in Trove. Now, moving on to Morocco, we note that back in February, uh, Predator, they got an extension to the rig, uh, the Star Valley Rig 101. They're looking forward to drill some more wells. It's the MOU5. Uh, pause the video if you want to read the highlights here from the very excellent Financial Times. Now, the approval process seems to be dragging on a bit, uh, which can be very costly, especially with kit ordered and on its way and under hire. Now, the uh, surface location, well, it was moved um, 280 meters, which meant that needed to import new kit to, uh, to drill a deviated well. It's saying that there's a net 6 TCF gas prospective resource. Sounds quite a claim. Also said to be checking out helium. This is the uh, latest thing that companies do. Evidence of the presence of helium in MOU3. Now, it's supposedly near big faults, which go down into the basement. Uh, but there is a sort of a helium bandwagon at the minute. And Trove has uh, details of all the significant helium accumulations worldwide. The figures that uh, are quoted for the size of this feature come from an independent technical report by uh, Scorpion Geoscience Limited. Um, they say uh, it's a 12% chance of success, which is about a 1 in 6 probability that it'll find anything. Predator, more optimistic. They say 50% chance of success. We'll see soon. Again, onshore Morocco and Chariot uh, have talked about the uh, Dartwa prospect, which has been drilled by OBA1. Here's the press release for that, and here's the uh, trove entry for it. Now, it's uh, a gas discovery, and it is going to be flow tested in the future. So we'll wait and see what comes out the ground on this one. Other news from onshore Morocco, it involves Sound Energy, who have actually sold part of their assets to uh, Managum. Um, I think that's how you pronounce it. $45.2 million was spent for 55% of Tendrara gas field and 47.5% uh, of Gran Tenrara and Anul uh, blocks shown on the map here. Manimum will fund phase two of the uh, gas field development and also two exploration wells. They'll pay back costs and contingent payments uh, in the future on various uh, success milestones. This is after Cal Valley Petroleum Inc. had an exclusive agreement back in June 2023 for 40% of Tendrara, but that obviously fell through, so congratulations to Manningham for actually getting this one over the line, and also to Sound Energy. Here's the Tendrara entry in Trove. Now, looking offshore Morocco, and this is from uh, Chariot, they're talking about the Anshua uh, development and various other activities planned for 2024. Here's a map showing the Anshua discovery with, within the Lixus block. And beyond that, you can see the Risana block with lots of leads and prospects. Now, the Anshua 3 is being drilled as we speak. It's uh, the well sputtered in August 2024. And it should take about 60 days or so to, uh, to drill this with the Steneforth drill ship. On the plot, bottom right, we're going to drill initially a pilot hole across into the foot wall, followed by a deviated well back into Anshua 2. Anshua 1 and 2, they've proven up um, sands or proven up pay in the A, B, C and M sands. And what they're doing on the uh, foot wall is actually missing all of those, uh, perhaps just clipping the M sand and then going into this deeper, potentially large sand, which was the, uh, the O sand, I guess, um, that was found in the Anshua 2. Now, I look at this section and I kind of question, well, how did the oil get into the foot wall? Was it by leakage from the main field? And if so, how do we end up with a deeper contact? Hmm, 
Interesting question. Also, if there was oil in the foot wall, there's juxtaposition there with various sands. Is that the route where it, the uh, hydrocarbon migrate? By the way, it's difficult to see how from this section you could get it uh, as deep a contact as is shown here to make up the 170 billion cubic feet of uh, prospective resource. Anyway, notwithstanding that, it looks like the main borehole is going to go through all of the sands, proving up the uh, extent of Anchois, and also go down and test that uh, deeper play, the north flank, which could have a lot of potential. Uh, if that's successful, potential also existing on the, uh, on the south flank. We'll be watching uh, with great interest and look forward to the announcement about the results of this well. Pause the video if you want to read something on the energy and activities offshore Morocco. This from um, Malky's blog. And the onshore activity uh, chariots RZK well on the Gaffret prospect. Still in Morocco and ExxonMobil have signed two blocks with ONHYM on them. It's the uh, Safi Asuri offshore and the Agdea Ifni offshore block. Now, this is described as a new country entry for ExxonMobil, but they have been uh, offshore Morocco before. And uh, there, there's the uh, acreage shown on the map there from Wellagents. We're looking forward to, to news on these projects. When we went into Trove, well, we found some of this information here. So we've got information on the prospectivity within both of these blocks, and certainly looks quite interesting. It's not the first time that uh, ExxonMobil have looked in the area. They shot a, or Esso shot a 2D seismic over the area back in 1967. So uh, they've been here a long time ago. Um, Shearwater and Fecker's Prospects, they look quite uh, interesting to me. And that's in my uh, one minute review. Moving on to Guinea-Bissau. And uh, yeah, this is a, this is a sort of an area for uh, wildcat exploration. Uh, you've got the, uh, the Block 1, Corvina Block. This is uh, Trace Atlantic Limited. And also you've got Block 5B, the Bakuda Block with uh, Cap Energy. These are small players with large acreage positions. Um, now, I remember Guinea-Bissau blocks from my days at Black Star Petroleum. I know that Corvina, well, that's been on the market for quite some time. Here we see another block. This is a Sinapa. It's actually the Dubai-based company Apus Energy. Uh, they've actually sputtered the well in early September. They're using the uh, Diamond Drilling's uh, Ocean Black Rhino drill ship. They're using AGR well management. Apus farmed into Noor Energy. It was announced back in June 23. Uh, they paid $23 million for past costs and, and long lead items. There will be two contingent payments due uh, with some success milestones, each of $30 million. There's the uh, article from the uh, excellent Upstream magazine. Just a little bit of background. So what do we know about the Atom Prospect? Well, we have lots of information in Trove. On the left, here's a, a seismic line. You can see that it's a, a Senonian Late Cretaceous Angular Unconformity play, very similar to the SNE1 well. It's a rotated fault block uh, beneath the Senonian conformity, about uh, 40 square kilometers in size, a crest around about uh, 2,500 meters, and a spill around about 2,625 meters subsea. Reserves said to be of the order of 137 million prospective resources. It's a good looking opportunity here. And here's our entry. That's not bad, is it, for a, for a well that's uh, only just sputtered? But of course, it's been a prospect for quite some time, going back all the way to the uh, Svenska era. And we've had information uh, on this uh, for, for years, and we keep adding to it. Now, we haven't checked if all the hyperlinks are still working, but I can guarantee that um, some of them certainly will not. That's the nature of the internet. And with Trove, we actually keep that information that maybe goes back decades. So jumping back here to Senegal, but really just to illustrate that there are small companies, in this case Atlas, trying to farm out. If you want to find out more about that, contact Ian Cross at Moyes & Co. It probably needs a sort of a mid-cap plus sort of operator to fund and, and operate on these licenses. So what do we have in Trove for the background on these exploration blocks? Well, you see, we do have some entries of information here. In fact, it was featured on our 2024 Trove Wells to Watch video. Uh, you can see this is some of the prospects and get information uh, before signing up for the data room in Trove. 
moving swiftly on and uh, let's have a look at Sierra Leone's fifth licensing round. Now these blocks 53, 54, 55, 71, 72 and 73 were all awarded to Nigeria's FA Oil. Uh, that's six deep water blocks. Now they're near the uh, the border with uh, Guinea. And water depths in places are over 2,500 meters. Now Sierra Leone has had discoveries including Venus, Mercury, Jupiter and Savannah. So it's a proven petroleum system, but no commercial developments and no production to date. Good luck with exploration in that area. We were going to uh, talk about Sierra Leone and the uh, the license map, but when we were in a recent webcast, we were, we were actually asked not to take any screenshots. I'm not sure how we can convince people that uh, this is a good place to, to go and look uh, and invest time, resources and money in evaluating a licensing round. But uh, anyway, so uh, TGS have got a lot of information. I suppose uh, get in touch with them, but I'd much rather show you some of the opportunities here on our channel. So in conclusion, is there a knee-jerk reaction to dry holes? Well, you know, you look at countries like Namibia, before Graf and Venus, there'd been over 20 dry holes up and down the, uh, the continental shelf. And much of Northwest Africa, there have been a lot of dry holes and a lot of tried plays, but it's a huge area. Now, the exodus from parts of the MSGBC, that's really a concern. But there are two major projects due online imminently. It seems that uh, there's a lot of gas in this uh, region here. And, uh, of course, gas discoveries need a lot of scale to afford to, to build a, a, an LNG terminal or a floating LNG terminal. Big, big bucks. Lots of underfunded small explorers in the area, which need big operators to come in. Now, the majors and super majors, well, it's kind of a buyer's market. I mean, they can choose which country to go to, which countries to invest in. We've seen what's happened recently down in uh, South Africa, where it seems that uh, there were technical challenges, but also perhaps there wasn't an agreement on pricings that uh, meant that some of the companies there walked. Governments need to make the initial terms very, very attractive. Where well, companies have exited and there isn't any um, interest being shown currently in exploring off in your country, then you've got to really try and do something different and, and really try and encourage people, particularly to get them back. Once you've got the initial success and you've proven up, uh, you've got infrastructure in place, yes, that's, uh, that's when the interest will be seen and will be shown by many, many countries and companies all around the world. You know, Namibia and Guyana are great analogues. Okay, they were oil, but once you get the thing started, yes, those companies get perhaps very beneficial initial terms, but you get your prospects drilled, you prove up uh, hydrocarbons, and, and in time, you actually get all the revenues from uh, developments, which is huge. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed our video. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe. Remember, Trove, we're here to inspire geoscientists. See you back here soon. Bye for now.